the car actually looks pretty right now like it, it might not need that much work done to it like body wise maybe we'll just keep maybe we'll just keep it the way she, the way it is Whoa. Welcome back to the channel everyone. It's Superish Mario here and today we got a new build. Yes, another build. Getting none of them done but picking up new ones. So we got an 87 930. That's a 911 turbo. This bad boy is beautiful but it needs a lot. So it has a lot of character. It's gonna need a little bit gone through. We don't really know what we bought yet but that's what they always say. First you buy it, then you figure out what you bought. So we're gonna go ahead and do a little bit of a deep dive into the car. We already know kind of what it needs. It has a little bit of a backstory, but we'll fill you guys in a little bit. into the video i just want to mention we got some new merch the first official superish mario merchandise be sure to cop some before it's all gone it's the famous 73 911 e targa pop the top they're gonna be a limited quantity so be sure to snag one support your boys and uh, be sure to stay tuned in the rest of the video so this car got quite the backstory the previous owner did a bunch of mods to it it was pushing 500 plus horsepower it has a precision dual ball bearing turbo has hall tech ecu all those goods Problem is, the exhaust came loose and actually went against the body a little bit, caught the bumper and body on fire, burned the trunk a little bit, that whole area, and that obviously caused an issue. So the car kind of got totaled out. Now we got our hands on it. So the previous owner wanted to do some of the engine management system. He kind of wanted to redo it completely, make it a little bit more manageable. So you can see this precision turbo right here. It looks good, but a little bit of shaft play possibly. And we just confirmed that it possibly made a whole 600 plus horsepower. So we're dealing with the real beast here. We just need to get this thing to run and work and operate and drive and do fat burnouts. So here's that engine management system I was telling you about. It's the Haltech Sport 2000. Honestly, I don't have a great idea if this is a bad or good engine management system. Somebody out there might know, but as you can see, a lot of the wires were chipped off. Uh, you know, the pigtails were all cut. It's gonna need a little bit of work to figure out uh, what we wanna do with this. If we wanna upgrade to maybe something a little bit better, I know there's a few aftermarket options that might work well, but the only problem is with these kind of cars, you need specialists who know what they're doing, you know, know what they're doing correctly to not blow up the car. Cause an engine rebuild on one of these, we don't even wanna talk about that right now. The car has a few cool little aftermarket things going on. We got some coilovers. Uh, the whole exhaust system is fabricated and it looks pretty decent, but we're definitely going to have to do a few things, figure out what we got, figure out what we need, and make sure it doesn't catch on fire again. Uh, we got a dual fuel pump set up. Looks pretty sweet. Uh, the previous owners ran it a little bit different uh, around the body instead of through the tunnel, which, you know, might be the way you do it, might not be. We'll figure it out. Uh, going towards the front, everything else looks pretty standard. We got some aftermarket wheels. Who knows if they're... Uh, bent or not. Without further ado, we're gonna go start tearing into this thing and you know, see what we got. Look how much duct tape. How come we always get these cars that are held together by duct tape? Wow, hold on. This is a race car built by Eddie Bello himself. He might be the one that installed it. That's proof also. right there. I think it's time to, uh, are we gonna put this one next to the 73 or next to the Targa? No, <laughs> we wouldn't be optimistic about this one. Let's drop the motor, let's well, take off the wheels. Quick. It'll be quick. It will be quick after it's finished. It'll be fast quick. <laughs> but will the completion be quick? What is this? Stay it's tuned. Awesome. That's, the, that's what goes to the body to heat your feet up. So you still need it? No, you don't. Yeah, you do. Well, well you don't need it. Mine, I don't even have it. Yeah, but you're not going to be driving this thing in the winter. <laughs> How do you know that? Did, what if did, it's a brisky evening and you want some heat? Brisket? I want some briskets. Your wife is some, what your wife is like. My life be like. Oh, I'm so cold. <laughs> We're not taking the Porsche. It has no heat. Then you just tell her to walk. <laughs> cut that out. Cut that out. Cut that out. <laughs> cut, it, cut, it. <laughs> cut it out. We're going to go ahead and actually start wrenching on this thing a little bit. We don't have a plan, but you just keep pushing yourself forward, and then something is bound to happen. So be sure uh, to stay tuned 
and watch all the way to the end. There's a big surprise coming. Yo, guys, what's the surprise? <laughs> We came up with an amazing idea. Before we fix the car, we're, we're going to break it. And it's gonna consist of chopping the rear bumper because we're pretty sure the reason it caught on fire was just because they didn't have enough air coming through the rear. We're gonna make some precision cuts down this center portion here. Uh, we got a, a couple lasers that we installed right here. Uh, we're gonna use a fork truck and then we're gonna chop and then reveal the turb ski. So this is gonna be pretty crazy. Don't try this at home. It's not really uh, how you say, Dang, I'm thinking of a word. It's one of those really smart people words. Traditional. This isn't a traditional way to cut your rear bumper, but let's get started. You got your eye here. Oh no. Put it on here. Take it off. Take it off. So I know what you guys are thinking. Why would you cut up a perfectly good bumper? I can use that on my wife's PT Cruiser. This thing's gotta go. Wait till you see this thing. Don't show you got the Hulk here pulling off a whole deck lid. What do you have to say for yourself, Hulk? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, he got camera shy, guys. The Hulk got camera <laughs> he, he, does, <laughs> he doesn't talk. I wish that my car came off this simple. The beauty of air cooled simplicity. Hold on, there's a pluggy. It is brand. Oh, no. <laughs> it's not hooked up to anything. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Hulk. And that's how you take off the yes. um, the rear deflector. Uh, be sure to stay tuned in the next video. Uh, we'll just take it the safe route, which is not that safe at all. Been... The big reveal. <laughs> Nazar, bring the grinder out. <laughs> so the thing, the reason why we did that actually. So instead of rotting the exhaust here, we actually want to rot them through these sections here. It's uh, this new thing we saw at SEMA. Uh, yeah, it's next level. So if you want to sponsor us, if you want to sponsor us, exhaust through rebars.com. SEMA 2023. SEMA, SEMA 2023. Build. <laughs> Build, bought, and bought broken. <laughs> <laughs> B is for broken, busted, bananas, bruised, broken, busted, bad. And now a word from our sponsors. We had none. You want to say something, Roman? No, I'm not a sponsor. You let me, you let me hold twenty dollars that one time. Oh yes. He sponsored me one time. He did, and then he lost it, so now he owes me twenty I bucks. Actually, it's at like 23 now you know because of interest. Interest and inflation. Wheels kind of like. Take two. There's all the reinforcement inside. Ta da! Ugh. Hot what? Literally. <laughs> Bro. Can you what? just go on quick? Like, just pop, pop, pop. Dude, man. Like, I'm like, oh, bro, there's a catch. Anyways, that's fine. Dude, this is such a, it's such a ghetto rig. Give me that other one. Bro, talk about your own car. Talk about your own car. <laughs> Bro, I, like my cars are bad, but like... So no more funny business. We're gonna go ahead and remove what we need to remove and attempt to drop this motor. We're gonna try to turn it at first, see what we got going on, but it's gonna have to come out. It's gonna have to go on and get looked through to see what we're working with, what kind of engine management system we wanna work with, get this thing actually up and running and running well. Let's go sponsors, bro. Sponsor. So we got those reinforcement bars off that hold that rear rebar. It wasn't really doing anything to be honest. That thing doesn't look original. Uh, it kind of freed up a lot of the space to work back here. As you can see, the exhaust, the turbo, underneath the motor, wastegate, everything's kind of exposed now, which is good. Uh, we're planning to drop the motor. So anything that'll give us the most space to work here and drop this thing down, it's gonna make our life a little bit easier. Um, yeah, we're just gonna keep working at it until we get this thing on a pallet. On a scale of turn one to ten.
So we got both axles out. We're gonna go ahead and see what else is left underneath here. Probably take off any bracing, uh, anything that's gonna get in the way. And then we're gonna go ahead and lower it, disconnect that shifter coupling in the transmission, then hopefully plan to drop it out. Let's see how professional your aiming skills are. Pick one up. Kobe. Blacker than the abyss. That's pretty black oil. So yeah, we had to drain that really quick. We might as well drain the, the resins, all right? Taking a whiz. Trying to get this oil line off. Had to bring out the big guns. Nice. Send it. Should we move the bucket? You sure have a way to spice things up. Oh, not too bad. Let it ride. We're getting some of the oil, might as well get all the oil. Just took out the main drain. Had a little bit of a spill. Train cap has a little bit of schmuck on it, but not too crazy. Is it high? Black is correct. What are you saying? Bella. So we got everything disconnected, a couple oil lines, as well as uh, some stuff coming from the transmission. I think that's everything. We're gonna go ahead and lower it, disconnect the shifter coupling in the transmission. And then we're gonna go ahead and probably lift it back up slightly to get the transmission mount off and then figure out how we want to drop it on the pallet. Hopefully we don't run into any snags, but whatever, we'll get through it. Let's get it. Oh! Uh, yes! Yeah. Yeah. So, so we got a couple of blocks underneath the motor. We're gonna go ahead and lower Transmission mounts, get those two unbolted. Dropped. Okay, Roman. That's the safer way to do it. Huh. No. I mean, motor's, motor's out. The car legit is like, you gotta like hold it. Look at this. Yeah, it's like, it's about to fall over to the front. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa there, Johnny. I got it, I'm holding it. She doing a little shaky shake. Oh, Weird at all, yeah. Those spacers don't seem uh, suspect at all. Let's look from here. Okay, I mean, definitely trying to hold on. All right, you have gone to go a little bit. Okay, now you can go back. Almost clearing the fan trout. Actually, it's clearing right it now. It is clearing, yeah. So we're just gonna kind of just double checking that everything's there. Most of the stuff was already cut, so we're good. So we got the motor and transmission out. It was a little bit of a mission, but we did it. It's gonna give us a chance to actually get in here, clean it up, do a little bit of repairs, a little bit of this fire damage is gonna get fixed up, do a nice deep cleaning, and yeah, just refreshing it completely before all the motor and stuff goes right back in. We're gonna take a little bit of a look at the motor, make sure that everything is actually in good shape, healthy, and uh, do a little bit of rebuild, take off some of those parts that are all red, and actually make it look a little bit more classy before it goes back in. So as you can see, we got the motor on a pallet. Everything is pretty much exposed and we'll have good way and good room to work on it. Start tearing some stuff off and just kind of getting a feel for it, what this thing may need. So a little bit about the interior of this 87 930. So it's nothing too fancy. It's just a uh, gray and black. They did a couple little extra details that they liked, you know, put some gray centers in there as well as this. This is the interesting part right here. They engraved or had embroidered Poppy in the headrest of the, the seat section. <laughs> Very interesting, but everything else is basically pretty basic. The dash is really nice. We got an aftermarket stereo system. We got a boost gauge down there in the corner. 
Uh, we got the turbo stitching. Um, but yeah, nothing too out of the out of the ordinary. Uh, we're definitely gonna redo the whole thing. Sure. Push up. Nothing against you, old owner. Nothing against you, puppy. Nothing against you, puppy. We love you. But it's gonna be a change. <laughs> it's trash. <laughs> It's gonna need a lot of stuff. This thing was kind of hacked together at some points. So we got a kind of a fresh, clean slate to do whatever the heck we want. It's gonna be a really sweet car when we're done with it. We're gonna make it worth the while of actually pulling the motor, refreshing everything, making this thing look sweet, giving it a little bit of modern touch, and just making it a high horsepower 930. So there's no worry about keeping its originality because obviously it's already been modified. And yeah, it's, uh, it's been fun taking this thing out. And I hope you guys stay tuned and check out the other Porsche air cooled videos as well. Be sure to leave a like, leave your thoughts. What would you do to this car? And yeah, we'll catch you guys next time. As always, be blessed and be super rich. What's the surprise? Let's go check it out. Open that bad boy up. Sheesh. Another one? And another one. And another one. Let me get up in here just for a split second. Ooh -wee. What do we have here? Oh, it's actually clean. Not bad. Not bad at all. Look at that original radio, bro. What happened? See you guys next time. Welcome back to the channel everyone, my name is Mario and today we have an 87 Turbo that we just pecked up as a new pecked up. We now sell quail tails for your forklift. So you can cover all models, Mitsubishi, Toyota, but not Porsche. <laughs> oh, you'll grab it, it's getting heavy. <laughs> Bam! There you go. You look so silly with the hammer like holding it. Like, yeah. I love it. It feels good.